One of my favorite ways to explore Chelsea is via the High Line. Not only does it offer a really gorgeous perspective of New York, like this one of the little island, but it's also sprinkled with art. This is a piece from the artist Hannah Levy titled Retainer, which is obviously retainer, but more importantly, it's fashioned from marble from Italy. We're starting the day at David's Warner to see a group show of Prince in collaboration with the Prince Studio Two Palms. And the exhibit is titled Unrepeated Unique Prince from Two Palms. And Unique Prince is a little bit of an oxymoron, but the collection of artists in the show is really impressive, starting with these works by Dana Schutz. I love these prints by Stanley Whitney, and I love that you, his work is always instantly recognizable. These are prints by Cecily Brown, and they're quite a sexual departure from her usual themes, which surround hunting dogs and animals, but still her signature abstract figurative style. We're now heading up to Jack Shaman Gallery, and this installation by Carrie Mae Weems is titled Repeating the Obvious. The redundancy of the image of the boy in the hood, quote, articulates the ongoing racial violence and depersonalization of its victims. This is Weems' fourth exhibit with Jack Shaman Gallery, who describes the show as highlighting Weems' decades-long engagement with injustice, identity, and redemption. We're now heading up to Marlborough Gallery, and I haven't been to Marlborough Gallery in quite a while since the gallery temporarily closed while they were sort of figuring out gallery ownership among the family. However, this is a really strong exhibit of works by Tomas Sanchez titled Inner Landscape. And the show consists of acrylic paintings on linen that Sanchez has created over the past decade. And the subject matter of his works are images that Sanchez pictures in his mind while meditating, which is something that he's done diligently over the last five years. He says, while I enter a state of meditation, it's as if I'm in a jungle or a forest. The mind enters into a great exhilarated state 
like an exuberant jungle where you can experience fear, desire, anguish, all types of emotions and feelings. And when I begin to feel that there's a point of inner consciousness, everything goes toward that inner space, that inner river. Everything goes toward that place of quiet, that realm of tranquility within the forest where there is a lake. And while most of the works evoke inner peace and tranquility, some paint a much harsher reality of how we as humans have polluted our beautiful planet with copious amounts of garbage. The details in these paintings are just unreal. I would love to see how Sanchez was able to create such small brush strokes. We've now headed over to the Flag Art Foundation to see Singa Sampson's exhibit in its final week. The show consists of 26 oil paintings that, according to Sampson, explore the nature of violence, its laws, its flair, and its finality. And I was lucky to see his work at Periton in 2020. He is an artist from Cape Town, South Africa, who's known for his contemporary portraits that have this really haunting quality to them. According to the art critic Landele Fikini, the gaze of the viewer is treated as a violent intrusion. In fact, Samson confirms that by stating, I wanted the feel of the show to be as though you just stumbled upon a scene that you weren't supposed to see. The next stop is Lehman Maupin Gallery to see lens and sphere sculptures by Helen Pastian. And Pastian is widely recognized as a pioneer and a leading member of the 1960s light and space movement in Southern California. Other members of this movement include James Terrell, Robert Irwin, Mary Corse, you've probably heard of them. And the movement's intention was to explore the relationship between light and space. And while these sculptures look like glass, I thought it was really interesting that she utilizes industrial epoxies, plastics, and resins to create these works. The last stop of the day is at Green Naftali Gallery to see an exhibit by Paul Chan titled a drawing as a recording of an insurrection, and it is exactly that. He created this double-sided drawing as a response to the events of January 6, 2021. He created this work to not only, quote, document the events of the day, but also to capture the surreality of watching it unfold across countless screens and streaming platforms. And the gallery opened the show on the anniversary of the insurrection and prompted visitors to register to vote. And for all of those that register during the show, they'll be entered to win a drawing from Chan as a sort of a thanks for participating in healthy democracy. I 
hope you all enjoyed this little tour of Chelsea and I will see you in another New York City neighborhood next week.